Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. There are signs in the world, and signs can give you messages about life. Not every sign you see you will understand the meaning of. And there is something where a, a, a number of people, they may come together to make you believe something is true when it's not. And when this happens and you feel like there's some kind of injustice being done to you, it's very likely that the truth is not in there when there's injustice or the truth is missing somehow. And you can, instead of looking to the other people, just look to the signs that you see around you to try to find uh, the true meaning, the true messages about life. So there are signs in, in the idea that the United Nations takes all of this money and is always asking for all of this money to help people and they have never put one vegetable in the ground so they constantly need more and more money in order to do their mission but why didn't they just solve the problem and put vegetables in the ground there's a sign in this and the idea that in Syria, there is three pieces. There is the Russian Assad uh, area. There is the American area, Kurdish area, American Kurdistan. And there is the uh, Turkish area. So when you have a place where there's people there that are very greedy and they're just taking everything for themselves, they're going to take and take and take and take as much as they can for themselves. And there's going to come a time when there's nothing left for the other people there. And when, when you take and take and take and take, then everyone's going to look to you and say, I want that too. And how are you going to protect it? One man cannot make all of the beautiful things we see in the world. Then one man cannot protect all of the things we see in the world. And certainly these men are not operating these sophisticated societies that we have. One man alone is not operating these. It's things like greed are operating these. And when you have a big number of people working together to just take and take and take until there's nothing left for everyone else, then each one of them, and this is why it's a destructive it's a self-destructive system it's not with God that um, each one of them is going to need to take and take and take and then protect what all of he's taken from all the people that he took it from so this is a system where the top gets higher and higher and it starts to become very very unbalanced exactly like the Tower of Babel and um, when the more it becomes imbalanced, the more they need to take. And the first thing that you need to do when it's empty around you and you need to rebalance is you're going to put your arms out to stop yourself from falling. And that is exactly what we're seeing happening is that these are unstable systems and they're not designed uh, to last. And they are um, trying to restabilize themselves now. So there are signs everywhere. And um, 
there there was signs in um in 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 the world war one there was a problem of the warfare and you should understand how the basic idea of world war is gonna go it's that in the world war one there was trench warfare and in order to finish the war someone has to win and when you have two armies fighting of equal power they are going to cancel each other out so what happened in world war one is that in order to break the stalemate they had to of the trench warfare they had to design new weapons that would be able to break it and that weapon was the chemical weapon in world war ii they had to find a way to um to break the equality of of the army so that they could take it so that someone would have an advantage in order to break that equality and that was the airplane and in in the uh there was incredible air battles and when you have air-to-air -air combat that's also using equal force it just dis dissolves both sides entirely so how did they finally break world war ii break the lines break the front lines of world war ii atomic bombs they dropped the bombs on hiroshima and nagasaki and that finished up the war so we can expect that in world war three that they already understand that when you have equal powers against each other that it disintegrates so they would have they're going to be having weapons that um they're going to need to use in order to break that and we are never going to be the ones and and we 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 never had the interest it's just really not in our life it, it's we have a course of life here and we are not them and and so we we don't you know take and take and take and take and take and take so we don't need atomic bombs to defend ourselves against the our our bad actions so the uh the syrian people they should not cooperate with any more of the fighting in syria because it's not needed and um so i have a um paper that I wrote in 2015 and this was written for Syria and it, uh, while it doesn't it's not directly about Syria it's absolutely for was written for Syria and in this paper it is about signs and I'm going to explain and read it to you now Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Nothing that was made by Allah exists for the purpose of destruction. All of the items are collections of elements that are organized for the purpose of supporting some type of structure. In the manner of building, there are signs about compatibility. At the beginning, it was the creation of this planet. God said, let there be light, sky, sea, earth, plants, lights in the sky, living creatures, and man. And everything had its limits, which separated it and made it distinct. The ability to take action purposefully is power. Everything had its limits of power 
and Adam was a man, and Adam was alone. God said, I have put a trustee on this earth. He gave Adam knowledge of the nature of reality of all things and everything, and he said to Adam, Convey to them their names. That is the Quran, Surah 2, Ayat 30, 31, and 33. After that time, Adam was accompanied by a match for himself of his own kind, named Eve. God said to Adam, Both you and your spouse live in the garden and eat freely to your fill, whatever you like. But approach not this tree, or you will become transgressors. That's the Quran, Surah 2, Ayat 35. O oh, Adam and your spouse, live in the garden and eat your fill wheresoever you like, but do not approach this tree or you will become iniquitous. That is Quran, Surah 7, Ayat 19. And both ate of its fruit and their hidden parts were exposed to one another and they patched leaves of the garden to hide them. That is Quran, Surah 20, Ayat 121. And when they tasted the fruit of the tree, their disgrace became exposed to them, and they patched the leaves of the garden to hide it. And that is Quran, Surah 7, Ayat 22. Now, what's important to understand about this tree is what is the tree for? The tree, they say, it's the tree of knowledge or it's the tree of immorality. Now, it's said here that God taught Adam the names of all the things. So why did Adam feel that he needed to eat from a tree of knowledge? In fact, it was so significant that in Surah 2, Ayat 33, God said, told the angels to bow. And said, Adam, tell them their names. Tell them the names of all of the things. And he said, I know the secrets of the heaven and the earth. So God told Adam all knowledge and everything he needed to know. The secrets of the heaven and the earth. And he even took Adam in front of the angels to um, give him the to glorify him for knowing all of the names of all of the things. So, in Ayat or in Surah two, Ayat thirty four, he said, "We said to the angels, bow down to Adam because of this." So, what could be the reason that Adam needed to eat of this tree of knowledge or this tree of immorality or immortality? The purpose of, for Adam to receive some temptation to eat a forbidden fruit cannot involve knowledge and identification because Adam had already been taught about all things and everything. Also, Adam knew their names. The temptation was for the gain of immortality, to be immortal like angels. The prohibition on eating this fruit thus he believed was to withhold him from being immortal. And therefore, at some time, he must meet death. But there is also the belief that Adam was not cursed to death until after he ate this fruit. So, whichever you think it's true. The, once the fruit was eaten, however, there was no immortality in, in that. Adam and Eve found their hidden parts this we know, and disgrace was exposed to one another, that we know. God had prohibited, prohibited the exposure of their hidden parts and their disgrace to one another. So eating this fruit, it made them see that they should be ashamed and embarrassed of their genitalia. That's what it did do. 
because they they felt this and they hid those parts. God had forbidden the man and the woman to be exposed to one another of their hidden parts and disgraces, but that was transgressed upon and the boundary was violated. And because of it, God said, the result is one, the enemy of the other, Quran 21, 23, one, the enemy of the other, Quran 7, 24, one, the antagonist of the other, Quran 2, 36, fend for yourselves, Quran 7, 24, fend for yourselves, Quran 2, 36. The enemy and the antagonist is the name of the one who has evilness and will do them harm. The defeat of the enemy is by the failure of its evilness to thrive. So the way that you stop an enemy, it's not by killing an enemy, it's by stopping its evilness from thriving. Simply that the hidden part of the man and the disgrace of the man is exposed to the woman is the cause for one the enemy of the other and simply that the hidden part of the woman and the disgrace of woman is exposed to the man is the cause for one the enemy of the other now it is significant that the genitalia that it was out for each other to see but they did not feel this but then after they eat the fruit they feel that this is exposed and why is this important now regardless of whether it's about immorality immortality or if it's about knowledge what we do know is that adam and eve had a two children named cain and abel and those children tell the truth about this expo what what the um hidden parts and and the um disgrace of each other revealed is the children are telling the story because the children come from this so cain cain and abel the brother that killed his other brother and the jealousy between him and between them why could they not stop this from happening to their children The threat of the enemy is to overcome with power so that an injury is caused. Direct power alone is a, a thing to inspire formidable concern. The multiplication of sources of power is a thing to instigate confusion. As time passed for man and woman on the planet, and each person was their own power but with limits. And yet between a man and a woman who are a couple, their state as one being the enemy power towards the other. Well, this was constantly at, at, with the purpose for making mischief, damage, and evil between the man and the woman. The multiplication of men and women and mothers and fathers, this makes the um, uh, mu the multiplication of it, it, it makes the problems much worse. The present state of the world is this. All of the Quran in its telling and its purpose and its recitations, it's for the protections, messages, and warnings about good and evil. When the multiplication of evil inflicted, it's going across generations of time and doing damages and leaving so much confusion. And the people are not, or people are unable to notice that the power, it has an exquisite nature. And the people are unable to notice the patterns and they're unable to trace back to the signs of power. And this confusion has led people to stay 
uh, with this feeling, adamant, that those signs are separate and that they belong to a separate source. It is the claim of uh, polytheism. In polytheism, it's the claim that power can be removed from the consequences because it doesn't have to obey the same fundamentals as all the other power. In polytheism, it's the philosophy of trying to, of power trying to escape the consequences of its own doings. Allahu Akbar.